have Kurt Walker and Dave Schultz going at it, pretty much as predicted, Ted. Well, they were jousting with one another coming up, and uh, Walker obviously said, all right, let's go early and establish something. Well, of course, that's the one thing that Kelly can't afford to do. I mean, they are behind two games right now. They have to score goals and win a hockey game. You don't have to worry about taking Schultz on because Schultz is going to take care of himself. You're not going to intimidate him. All right, how do you use your muscle in a home game down two games to none? Well, really what you have to do is what, what they have started to do. Gene, force the puck, get the puck into the Philadelphia end, try to get some shots, try to get a lucky goal or get a good goal. Schultz is pointing to Kurt Walker, and I think he, he won the battle there by a slow decision. But he's also winning the verbal game right now as he's laughing and Walker's upset. Well, of course, Dave, you know, he's, when you're Fred, uh, Coach Cheryl, a little bit concerned what's going on here. I don't think he's oh. concerned about Schultz. Ted, I think John D'Amico said that Walker was the aggressor to, Neil, uh, to Dave Newell, and Walker just jumped up and started going nose to nose over the glass with Newell. I think he's going to be picked up as the aggressor on it, maybe pick up the greater number of minutes. D'Amico there has a hold of Walker, and D'Amico uh, is a very strong man. He can take, there is an exceptionally fine athlete, Clark. Up, up. Walker, I think he's been out, I I think think he's he's been out, of, the put out of the game. It looks that way. Goes back to the far boards in the left wing for Joe Watson. Jumps it up to long break. To the left wing corner for Sittler. Tried to hit Thompson with a pass. Turnbull runs over. Going hopper. Should be interference, but they're going to allow play to continue. Thompson block. Jim Watson can't go. Another shot. A great club save. And we've got flashing down there by one of the least. One across the chest. 27 is Sittler. Right here. Oh, right here you'll see where. There's the slash. Right here. The high stick really was an accident, too. Uh, Clark was putting an extra hard check on him, and as Turnbull did make the shift, he went down a little bit lower. Bobby is not too happy. We'll see it right here. And there's where when he made the shift, and the puck, the, the stick really went off his arm, off his left arm and up. I think the Toronto player was as much responsible for that becoming a high stick. As I said, Bobby didn't fully intend to do it. Behind the net, coming out in front, McKenney near side. He's got Alexander at the point. Holes, 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 right out in front. In comes Turnbull. Shot block, score. Rebound, Turnbull. Bernard Perron was complaining about one of the lace. I think it might have been Turnbull who had speared or slashed Perron prevented him from making the save and this is what precipitated what happened uh, what's going on right now scott garland fighting vig vigorously with ray scapanello to get loose i think you're right don in the fact braun seemed to be held out of position that he couldn't get back in there to coming across the net to make that save on turnbull and this is what he was going to charge out of his crease and this is where the altercation did start in the corner. I get the feeling that Dave Newell has let this game get out of hand. I mentioned earlier in the first period that he was calling a lot of penalties to try to keep it under control but even within trying to keep it under control uh, he's lost it completely. Here again you'll see uh, he wasn't in the crease. But he was interfering with the goaltender. Either way, it should have been no goal. And there we see where the altercation started. Here comes Seleski at the lead line. Tries to go through. Chris takes the puck. You know, I talked to a couple of the Flyers about uh, the way they plane their sticks down, uh, destroying that glass covering, and this could be uh, what's behind it. There's Seleski there being hip-checked. Find out how it's good it is, good it is defensively. You certainly haven't had an opportunity to see what it is offensively. Seleski is getting into an altercation in the stand with some fan. And this is the one thing, Don, where fans, you know, they should just sit down and be quiet. The players, the players are in a game, they're under pressure, they're hot. And the one thing you're going to get is uh, any fan is going to get hurt. John D'Amico, the linesman, is in the Flyers' penalty box uh, trying to get Seleski to sit down. Actually, I wonder what the... Uh, if it's
it's really sound for even the police to lay their hands on a player. They should protect the player from the fan because I've never yet seen a player go after a fan unless the fan has made the move first. Well, you know, there's a there's been a problem here once before with Maloney from Detroit. He's got to appear in court, and I think some of the lawyers and some of the policemen and the officials that enforce laws, you know, uh, they're getting a little bit out of hand. Uh, I, I firmly believe that players should be able. There's Fred Shero with all of his players off the bench to go over, and this is a natural thing to go over and help your teammate when he's in trouble with a fan. But I was going to say, Don, that the Toronto police have been uh, informed and uh, told to get into these altercations very quickly because of the Maloney incident. And after all that, they lead by one. And let's see what happens now to the Leafs under the Flyers. We're going to have a penalty as we've got Tiger Williams and McAlargy. McAlargy's right hand is free as is Dave Williams. Now McAlargy goes down and immediately Ray Stefanello and John Amico move in. Reg Leach takes his man down. That's Rod Sealing. But very quickly, the linesmen move in just as soon as they hit the ice. McAlargy was loose and they wanted to climb back in again. Dave Newell standing by directing traffic, warning Jim Watson and Claire Alexander to stay away. And it'll probably be five apiece for fighting for McElhargy and Dave Williams. The fisticuffs that we had started right over here on the boards. And here we have it in the spotlight. Oh, in the second period, they find themselves only ahead by one goal. And this certainly, psychologically, has to hurt them. I know if we get Lindsay, we'd get a roughhouse game. <laughs> Uh, Jack McAlargy. Looks like he's uh, honing his fingernails. Schultz uh, wanted someone, so now he's got a hold of Salving. Selesky wanted to take someone with him. He wanted company. But Schultz breaks away clean. And apparently, Cooler has a prevail. We've got 7.41 to go in the second period. The Flyers trail Toronto 4-3. Again in front, eludes uh, Jimmy Watson and Sittler. Tries to roll it in front, does, but Clark intercepts him. We're going to have another penalty. Here we'll see right here, uh, right in front of that net, and it was unnecessary. Around behind the net, holding the puck is Tuts and chased by Leach. Now goes uh, referee Dave Nolley, which is belted by Leach. Here we'll look at it again, and you'll see how you could have call that elbowing. No way does he have an elbow in him at all. It, it, it was just a real cheap call, and he couldn't even call it right. Uh, I think it might have been two minutes for uh, knocking him down on the last rush. Close into the uh, Toronto zone. Flyers have out there Kelly. Kelly steals it away. Wants to come out in front. The shows off the side of that Kelly a stopper, and we're going to have a stoppage. Now look out! Here we go again. Salming's in the middle. Nakalagi's in there. Kelly's in there. Schultz is in there. There was a thumping check that knocked the helmet off of Borea Salming, and Salming, I believe, was the one that threw the check, or at least bumped him hard enough to rattle it loose. And I believe it might have been either good enough or Bridgman. Turnbull trying to get his hand and does have his hand on McElhargy. And the man in between is Ray Scapanello. Men in between D'Amico and Scapanello. You didn't tell me that McElhary was a, a, a pretty good fisticuff man. Well, he's a legend in his own time out of the American Hockey League, Ted. Uh, cut from the, the Lindsay mold. He's got a pretty good man hanging on to him now. Referee or linesman D'Amico. There behind the net, uh, we got Salming and Bridgman. Bridgman is going at it with, I believe, Boya Salming, and he's really raining right hands in on him. And someone's going to be a third man in here. Everyone's going at it. Newell has uh, waved to both benches to stay right where you are. Kelly's in there. Schultz is in there. Bridgman really ripped into Salming. See, it's good enough with George Ferguson, McKenney and Kelly, Schultz being held up, Bridgman and Salming still looking at each other. Newell has 
has a pencil and paper out there. Uh, figured that he's going to get everybody right down by name. And I would imagine most of these fellows that are on the ice, Don, uh, aren't going to see too much ice time the rest of the night. Well, McAlargy has the line put down, and that could cost him. continually throughout that waltz. The last one uh, seemed to be pretty well settled when uh, Salming and Bridgman cheat off and Salming uh, seemed to get pretty much the worst of it. Sealy guns it to the Flyers right wing corner. Bridgman the carom goes behind his own net. Deals it up but it's going to be picked up by Boutet. Back to Alexander but we have a whistle as I believe it's a Toronto penalty against Dave Williams for high sticking. Dave Williams uh, right here will get that high sticking penalty right here. Good cross checking. Good call by the referee. Clark the rebound. Clark trying to control. He's pushed down by the by ceiling. And the puck is tied up for face off with nine seconds left. They bunch up in the right wing corner. As down on the bottom of the pile, I believe, is Rod Ceiling. Call a tight one against the Flyers and they got away with nothing. So the end of the game, final score, Toronto 5, Flyers 4. We'll be back with a summary right after these messages.